We'll call this session of the Senate Budget Committee to order. Uh, I have the permission from my distinguished ranking members staff to proceed. Um, we have multiple committees upon which we serve in the Senate, and um, from time to time it's important to go check in at another committee to get in the queue properly. And um, so Senator Grassley will be along, I will make my opening statement, yield to him, and then uh, I will introduce uh, the first three witnesses. Senator Grassley will introduce a witness, Senator Lee will introduce a witness, and then we will uh, proceed. We are here today to discuss women's rights, their right to bodily autonomy, their right to set the course of their own life, and their right to economic freedom. I hear often that the Budget Committee should only be concerned with debt and deficits, but any serious conversation about debt and deficits must also analyze threats to economic growth and stability. Debt and deficits do not occur in a vacuum. Hey. Welcome. I believe you. They result from the fiscal decisions that we make and from what we do that strengthens or that weakens our economy. Reproductive rights it turns out, are intrinsically tied to economic opportunity. Reproductive justice is economic justice. Restricting one restricts the other. As Professor Myers, the leading economist in this space, will testify today, we can measure the economic harms from dismantling Roe versus Wade, especially in already marginalized communities. The Dobbs decision triggered an immediate crisis for millions of women as antiquated state bans snapped back into place, and some states implemented new restrictions on reproductive freedom. Our witnesses, Ali Phillips and Dr. Zahedi Spung, will explain how these draconian state laws put patients, their families, and physicians into heartbreaking situations. About 25 million women of reproductive age live in states with severe restrictions on abortion, most in states that failed to expand Medicaid and already had higher rates of maternal death. Black women are disproportionately affected as many live in southern states with the worst restrictive policies, with existing structural barriers to care, and with already high rates of pregnancy-related complication and death. Doctors, too, lose their freedom to practice medicine as they are trained, delivering patient-centered, evidence-based care. I hear from Rhode Island OBGYNs about their colleagues in other states being put in impossible positions, with the lives of women and babies put in jeopardy. For a great many reasons, often deeply personal and harrowing, one in four women seek an abortion before age 45. One in four. That freedom to decide if and when to have a child affects a woman's life trajectory and her family's financial security. As the pivotal turnaway study found, women denied an abortion who had to carry a pregnancy to term were four times more likely to live in poverty. And the reverse holds true too. Reproductive freedom and choice including abortions and contraception, lowers maternal mortality, alleviates health risks, increases women's earnings, increases the probability that women attend college, and boosts local economies. Freedom turns out to have economic value. In Planned Parenthood v. Casey, these economic values were actually part of the court's holding. The court said, the ability of women to participate equally in the economic and social life of the nation has been facilitated by their ability to control their reproductive lives. Economists and researchers have since quantified the damage of state abortion restrictions to local and state economies, and the correlation is easy. The more extreme a state's restrictions, the more its economy suffers. A new study estimates that state abortion restrictions cost the national economy, on average, $173 billion per year. In overturning Roe and Casey, a small right-wing majority of a captured Supreme Court inserted the government into the personal life decisions of millions of women 
removing that freedom, never minding those consequences. This is a court with members on a mission. This freedom fell at their hands. Next may be the freedom to take mifepristone, an abortion medication long proven safe and effective. Next could come the freedom to use contraception. Even in vitro fertilization is under the gun at the hands of right-wing extremists. A Republican-led Congress and a second Trump administration could mean a national abortion ban. If reelected, Trump could abuse executive power to remove mifepristone from markets or try to prevent abortion medications or even contraceptives from going through the federal mail. The Republican effort to ban mail order medic medication could cause even larger economic damage than Dobbs. Generations of women fought for the freedom to make their own personal decisions. They fought and they won, and their victory brought economic gains in which we all share. But now extremists are trying to undo it all, leaving young women and girls in America with fewer rights than their grandmothers. Women and girls have lives worth respecting and protecting, and no one should be forced to carry a pregnancy to term against their will. Stripping women of this freedom casts a long shadow over their lives and over their families' lives, and it casts a long shadow over our economy as well. Congress should safeguard access to abortion and contraception and codify Roe into law. This is something women should decide. It's just not the government's business. And I will now turn it over to Ranking Member Grassley.